So after prayer today, God took me on, as he always does with me, a journey, right? Like God enjoys journeying me through life. And so he took me through a journey and uh, I was kind of just blown away by, I guess, things I just didn't remember or, but anyway, years ago, maybe 10 years ago, uh, I was in a, a, diff- a certain occupation and uh and there was somebody I was working with very closely, and there was somebody that she was working with very closely. Now, the person that she was working with uh, was really responsible for a lot of the success in the business, right? And uh, but every time she came, every time not the lady I was working close with, but every time the person she was working close with came around, like. I was like, something about this lady ain't right. I don't like her. Something is wrong. Now, granted, this is years before I got saved. So I probably, I had no wisdom about how I didn't like something. But God, what I've learned over the years is God has made my body almost a detector system. Like my body physically reacts to certain things not being right, right? And so this is years ago. And all I kept saying was something about her isn't right. I don't like her. And the person that I was, I worked with closely and she was like, well, Tiff, like, has she ever done anything to you? And I was like, no, but you need to fire her, get her out of here. I do not like this person, get her out of here. And she was like, but she's very responsible for a lot of the success in the business, which she was very responsible for a lot of the success in the business. And I said, I do not know get this lady. I, it's, it's my, I didn't like this lady so much that anytime she came around, cause I don't have, I have no poker face. I don't even know how to pretend like it's pretending is not in it, God did not put it in my DNA. Like I don't like somebody you're going to know it. And so the lady that I didn't like came to the woman I worked closely when she was like, Hey, like does Tiffany have an issue with me? Does Tiffany not like me? And she was like, nah, Tiffany don't like you at all. Like, I did. did you do something to her? She's like, I've never done anything to Tiffany. I don't know why she wouldn't like me. I don't know why she wouldn't like acting very clueless. So of course, whenever you don't like somebody that everybody likes, and whenever you don't like somebody that is responsible for the success of your business or whatever you're doing, of course, you know, you'll kind of look at me like, well, Tiffany, you're just, you're an error, if you will. Well, uh, it was not three weeks later because I told her to fire her. I was like, fire, I don't, I don't like her. And that's really all I had to say. There was no, I had no better way to say it. Three weeks later, I got a phone call from the woman that I worked very closely to. And she called to let me know that the woman that I did not like had stolen $50,000 out of their bank account and had stolen their email list, which at this point was over 100,000 subscribers and locked them out of their own email list. Uh, And so I was right. Now, this is, again, I want, for those of you that are just hopping in, I was just in prayer earlier today about something. And whenever I got, I get done praying, I try to sit and just listen to God. And God today took me on a journey of, uh, of my life and my past. And, and these are, I'm, what I'm getting ready to do is tell you a series of four or five stories that God took me through, um, for a reason. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get to my reason. So three weeks later, uh, I got the phone call that this woman had stole $50,000. Now you may say, well, Tiffany, how did you know? And I'm going to talk about the gift of discerning of spirits in a second, but I didn't have no reason other than my God has created my body to be a detector system. (laughs) So whenever I say something is not right about somebody, it's not because of any other reason. It's because God has made my, and if anybody with wisdom would use me as their eyes, because I am a detector system. And by the grace of God, much like Prophet Samuel, uh, none of none of what I've said have fallen to the ground to date. Another thing that God gave me was this is many years ago. Again, a woman had called me and she was um, super excited about life, like just really happy about life. Like this is one of these phone calls and you're like, man, you're in such a great mood. Did, Did anything happen today? And you're like, no, nothing happened. And as soon as I hung up now, these are I'm telling you. Two, these two stories I'm telling you right now are before I got saved. And then I'll go into a few stories after I got saved. But the story I just told definitely wasn't saved. 
the story I'm telling you right now definitely was not saved. Um, but this gift was still very innate in me. So this woman calls me. She's like super excited about life. And I'm like, man, you did, did something happen today? And she's like, no, everything is good. And so I hung up the phone and I heard a voice. Now, this is I use the word a voice today because I didn't know at the time it was the Holy Ghost. But I heard a voice say to me, um, she's going to try to commit suicide, warn three people. Now, I want you to imagine for one second, <laughs> you minding your own business on in your bed, you minding your own business, you not bothering nobody, and you hear a voice telling you that this person that sounded so excited on the phone is getting ready to try to kill themselves. And not only that, you now, ma'am, have to call three people and tell them. I don't even know why the three people were necessary, but Three of them I had to call and tell. Now, uh, I have a story of why I started listening to this voice after a while, which I now learned to be the Holy Ghost training me. But um, I think at, at that moment, I just I had so much experience with this voice in, in this moment. Uh, I said to myself, what's the harm in warning three people about this, even though I'm going to sound psycho crazy? OK, so I warned two two women and they both say to me, hey, Tiff, like, you're normally right, right? Like, again, I'm not saved, but I had a very strong track record of always being right about something. And they're like, you're normally right, but I think you're wrong about this um, because I just got off the phone with this person and this person was so happy. And then the third person I told said, you know what? I don't know why, but I'm going to believe you. Like there was no reason. And I was like, thanks, because I don't know if I believe me, but I appreciate the trust. <laughs> um, also, I want you to know that I didn't live in the same state as this person, but these three people did. So I was warning. Uh, well, two weeks later, I got a phone call at four o'clock in the morning that this person I had warned them about had slit their wrist and was now in the hospital and ended up staying there for about two to three months. Why did the person end up staying there? Because by the time they slit their wrist and they were getting ready to weasel themselves out of the hospital, I said, put me on speakerphone. And they put me on speakerphone and I told the doctor, you want a dead patient, let her go today. And she's not going to be breathing tonight. But because they, they were like, how did she know she was going to try to kill herself two weeks ago? I don't believe her today, but we're not going to stop believing her tonight. Keep her in here. And the the woman didn't talk to me for about two weeks. She was really, I mean, two months. She probably didn't talk to me for two months. And I was like, I didn't hardly talk to you no whole lot before you went in. But it was either I wasn't going to talk to you dead or I won't talk to you for two months because you're in the crazy part of the hospital. Nonetheless, you are still very much alive and we bless God, right? Uh, another example, now here is where I get a bit saved. Another example is I had had a, a good girlfriend of mine for about, maybe we have been friends for about two years now, right? Like two years. And, uh, you know, beautiful girl. And I say beautiful for a reason. I'm going to tell you why in a second. Beautiful girl, probably one of the most beautiful people I've ever seen in my life. And I remember one time I was getting ready to drive home. I'm from Rochester, New York. And so, um, and I live in North Carolina now, but I'm from Rochester, New York, and I was driving to Rochester. So I stopped in New York City because I had a meeting there and I was getting ready to stay at my girlfriend's house just to stay the night before I drove the five hour stretch up to Rochester, New York, which is where I'm originally from. Well, I get to her house and mind you, me and this girl have been friends for two years. I've been to her house before. I have been around, I know this girl, and I get to her house this time, and I'm not there for long. I'm only there to just get a quick nap in so I can get back on the road. And um, and everything about her house, I mean, I can see my the hairs on my arm, and I'm not that kind of person where hairs on the arm like stand to attention, but the hairs on my arm, baby, are standing to attention. And I am so irritated. I'm so vexed in this lady's house. Like, I'm like, why am I so aggravated by you? What is going on? Why do I feel like this? Like she would talk and I would get aggravated. I also want you all to know that this was like in the middle of a snowstorm. That's, as a matter of fact, that's why I had to pull over and I could not drive because I couldn't see. It was like we were having a whiteout. 
And and for those of you that don't know what a whiteout is, it's when it snows so bad you cannot see your hand in front of you. Like it's such a bad snowstorm. And so I can't go nowhere, right? Because I'm, I'm stuck because it's a snowstorm. But I'm like, why every time you talk, I'm so vexed. Like, and I'm trying to use a better word than vexed. Um, I'm trying to use a better word than annoyed. I'm trying to use a better no- a word than like, it was something in me that was like, oh, what? Like, I couldn't even, and let me tell you how vexed I was. I was so vexed by my friend of two years that I left out of her house in Manhattan and slept in my car for three hours so that I could get back on the road. Now, I know you all don't know me well, but I presume you know me well enough to know that I'm not going to sleep in my car in New York City in the middle of the night if I was not as vexed as I was, right? That's not even the kind of person I am. And I said, when I got to my car, I was like, God, why do I feel like she's a witch? This has been my friend for two years. I know this lady. I said, why do I feel like she's a witch? That's the word I use. And you have to know me also know to know that I don't use the word witch often. And I kept saying, why do I feel like she's a witch? Like, but she's beautiful. And the reason I say beautiful is because my assumption of witches were they had the long nose, they had the mole, she should have had a black hat on, I didn't see any brooms in her house. Like, <laughs> I had this very classic assumption of what a witch looked like. And um, this was one of the most beautiful people I have ever seen in my life, right? And so I was like, I just kept sensing that she was a witch. That's all that was kept pointing at me. And, um, and so I j- slept on the street for three hours and I drove up to Rochester. Do y'all know when I got on Instagram the very next day, my friend that I had had for two years posted on her Instagram page two hours before that she had just joined a coven. She hashtagged witch. She hashtagged coven. She hashtagged white magic. She hashtagged. <laughs> Woo, honey, this baby, this lady. I was right. Okay. I could not believe it. I was like, what? The, what are you doing? What? I was right. Now, again, I want to let me bring y'all back to why I'm telling y'all this story. I, I was in prayer today. And after prayer, God took me on a journey. And these are some of the stories he reminded me of. And I'm going to tell you why God took me on the journey in a second. But I just wanted to take I wanted to go on a journey. Uh, somebody said, did I ever talk to her about it, man? There's nothing else for us to talk to. Absolutely not. I At that point, I probably had just gotten saved and I didn't have a whole lot of wisdom with my gift of discerning of spirits. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just don't. It wasn't nothing else to talk about. Just, you have a good time over there, ma'am. Um, another story that God took me to, and this happened years ago. This happened back in 2015. Both of those stories happened in 2015. but um, And that was the year I got saved, for those of you that don't know. But another story, there was a woman... Uh, just uh she wasn't even a friend of mine she was excuse me she was somebody who had worked on a little part of my business and um super quirky woman and we just never we did not have a relationship i did not know her well but definitely somebody who you know we were we were nothing let me say that we we worked in she did something for my business one time and we went to go drink green juice that's it So in this moment, we're drinking green juice. She's talking about how her and her husband are trying to conceive. They have been married for like seven years, six, seven years at this moment. Maybe, maybe longer, but six, seven years. They were trying to conceive and they have not been able to have a baby. So me, I, God starts talking to me and all I say to her is immediately, 
Now, mind you, she, they ain't been able to have a baby for six or seven years. So why the sense of urgency that I have? I don't know. But I say to her, do not let anybody watch your baby. I said, don't let anybody watch your child. Don't let, don't let, um, your, your, your siblings watch your child. Don't let your, your mom or dad watch your child. I said, even your church members, don't let them watch your child because even the ones you trust, you don't know if the child watching them is going to be molested and they're going to try to molest your child. Don't, don't do it. Don't let anybody watch your child. Now to know me is to know that I'm not like hypersensitive like that or like super paranoid about stuff like that. But with her, I was. And she said, well, Tiff, I'm not really around anybody except for like my parents and like few of her church members and things like that. And I said, don't let anybody watch your child. Don't let, I said, don't let any grandfather watch your child. Don't let any, don't let your child sit on anybody's lap. Don't let anybody watch your child. Now, I know you all don't know me well, but you also don't know that I was very aggressive when I said this to a woman who could not conceive for six to seven years. So this was not a sense of urgency here, except for the Holy Ghost making it a sense of urgency in that moment. Um, And she was just kind of like, okay, I won't let anybody watch this child. She couldn't have for six years now, but okay, Tiffany. And I said, okay, girl, please hear what I'm saying to you. And this is like a white lady I'm talking to. And I need y'all to know that because, you know, sometimes, you know, not against y'all white people, but you know, I'm, I'm a little expressive when I speak and maybe they're not used to that, but I was just like, don't let anybody watch your baby. It was not four months later that this lady reached out to me in, in shame. And she said, she didn't even want to tell me this But I believe personally, it was the spirit of God that made her tell me for my own sake. This lady went on to tell me that uh, the police knocked on her mother's door to arrest her father for a child pornography sting that he had been in for a very long time. Her father, who she trusted. Her father, who she loved. Her father, who probably would have been the first person she had watched her child because it was somebody that, like, he was a good dad to her. And her father had been in a child uh, pornography ring for many, many, many years. Um... There was also a time uh, years ago, I had a neighbor uh, who had two little girls. They were the same age as Jada at the time. And uh, they were very pretty little girls. And uh, I remember Jada wanting to play with them. And I remember I said, no, they're being molested. And of course, you may say, well, Tiffany, why didn't you call the police? And I'm like, because I don't know how I know this. Like, Why do I know these two little girls playing in the neighborhood are being molested? Beautiful little blonde hair, blue eyed girls being molested. And even though that wasn't fully confirmed, the next week, Child Protective Services took them out of the house. So I I figured that's a confirmation for me. And the last story I'll share with you tonight that God shared with me, he shared with me, like he, he took me on a journey of plenty of stories I have forgotten about. <clears throat> but a few years ago I was on a I was on a tour with like it was a bunch of men I was on a tour with. And after the tour, we would always at the end of the tour um greet a- the audience. Like we would just stand there and greet the audience and things of that nature. And I remember this one man coming up to me and he started talking and nothing from the outside didn't did looked unusual, but I remember saying he has a, he wants to stab me. This is all I kept saying to myself. This man wants to stab me. And while he was talking to me, <clears throat> I was looking around to try to make eye contact with somebody to come help. Cause I'm like, I don't know why I think this man wants to stab me. It doesn't make sense. It's a thousand people in here. Um, but I just, I felt this, there was this knowing I had that he wanted to stab me. So after I got him away from me, just, you know, I'm real good at getting you on off 
getting you on up out of here. Um, he went and talked to the next guy in line and that was it. So at the end of the tour, we were all eating and I kind of mentioned it. I was like, yeah, I was talking to that guy. He had like the ponytail and stuff. And I said, I just, I, I sensed that he wanted to stab me. And one of the guys said, what did you say? And I said, I sensed that he wanted to stab me. And he said, oh, he probably did. And I was like, why you say that? And he said, because when he came to him in line, he said, yo, bro, can you pray for me? I just feel like I want to murder. I said, what? He wanted to, he wanted to murder. And you talking to this PYT, okay, pretty young thing, and you wanted to stab me up? What? I... I was like, <laughs> what? So then we done with that story. I don't know how many of y'all remember my New Orleans story because I've only ever been there twice. <laughs> but the first time I was in New Orleans, my birthday is on the 4th of July. The first time I was in New Orleans, it was around that time because uh, I went to the Essence Festival. And I remember I went with a bunch, a bunch of friends uh, and I was not saved at this time, but I remember uh, all of my friends were drinking and having a good time, but I wouldn't drink, right? I would not drink like, and this is the time I was definitely, I would take back a few shots or whatever, but I felt, I was like, it's not safe here is all I kept saying was it's not safe here. It's not safe. It's not safe here. Um, and I remember this guy, I didn't know him well, but I knew him well enough that I would have went out to eat or something like that. And he was like, um, Hey baby, you want to go see where my, uh, here I'm I trying to do my new Orleans accent. Hey baby, you want to go see where the ninth ward is? And I was like, absolutely. No, I do not want to go see where the ninth ward is. One hood is every hood. Like what, what, why is it popular? Cause, uh, cause Lil Wayne and them is from there, sir. I am not a hood. I am not a hood rat. I don't, it's not a museum. I don't need to go see where baby and them is from. Okay. One hood is all hoods. My auntie, I know what the hood looked like. I don't need to go on the tour. Okay. To go see what the hood was. But I also knew I didn't feel safe with him. I was like, you going to try to kidnap me or something and sell me off and drug me up. And I'm not doing none of that with you. But I wouldn't drink or none of that. So here we are. We are on our way to the Superdome, which is where. So Essence Festival is a music festival. <clears throat> And so we were, me and my friends were on our way to the Superdome to go to the concert. And on my way to the Superdome, I'm on the bus. This is a true story. I'm on the bus. I start screaming from the top of my lungs. Something bad is going to happen here. Something bad is going to happen here. And I mean, Tears are flowing down my face. Now, understand, I'm not saved. I'm super thugged out at this point in my life, okay? You look at me crazy. I'm literally trying to take you off this earth. Do you understand me? Like, I'm definitely like, what's up? Okay, I know how you girls like to tussle. But here I am on this bus, okay? Clearly, the Holy Ghost has overtaken me, and I'm not even saved, Okay? And I am screaming to the top of my lungs. Something bad is going to happen here. Something bad is going to happen here. The bus driver is like, is everything okay with her? My friends are like, what is wrong with you? Is Tiffany, is everything okay? And I could not stop. I was, I could not stop bawling. And everybody was like, well, what's going to happen? And I was like, I don't know, but I want to go home now. Like, take me home. I don't want to be here no more. And I probably had like four more days left in New Orleans. And I was like, I do not know. Take me home now. Like, I bought me a flight the next day and flew home. That's how bad I knew something bad was going to happen here. And I knew it. And a matter of fact, um, I remember now, I, it, it came upon me when it started to rain. It started to rain and I started to scream something bad is going to happen here. And all of you know, a few weeks later, Hurricane Katrina demolished um, 
certain parts of New Orleans. Hurricane Katrina demolished it. Oh, yeah, I went home, baby. I don't play about stuff like that. Because I, I don't cry like that, first of all. And I definitely don't be screaming on a bus to the Superdome. No, ma'am, get me a ticket on up out of here. I'm going home. And a few weeks later, Hurricane Katrina hit. There was also a time that I was supposed to go on a, uh, to a very important meeting in New York City. It's one of those meetings that you put on your vision board if you use them. You back, I don't have a vision board these days, but back in the day I, I had them. And it's one of these meetings you would put there. It's one of these very important meetings that you are like thanking God for. And I remember when it came time for this, uh, for me to get on the plane, I heard a voice say, don't get on the plane. And I said, I rebuke you, devil. And I wasn't even like saved, but I knew how to rebuke the devil because you're not going to get me to mess up on this opportunity. OK, it's got to be the devil because I knew God gave me this opportunity. Right. And so I, I kept hearing this voice and I kept. I kept hearing this voice. I kept hearing this voice. I kept hearing this voice. I couldn't go to sleep. I couldn't rest. I kept hearing this voice. And uh, it, the voice was so loud, again, which I now know to be the Holy Ghost. But this voice was so loud that I knew I couldn't go. But this is when I began to know the difference between what I heard and uh, and the assumptions of why I heard it. So, for instance... What I mean is I heard the voice say no. Again, I know now today the, the voice is the Holy Ghost, but back then I didn't. Uh, I do not think vision boards are necessary. But the, I heard the voice say, do not go. And then Tiffany assumes why, right? Well, why can't I go? Maybe somebody's going to try to steal my purse. I don't know. Maybe something bad is going to happen. Maybe something, things of this nature. I do not know. Um. But I knew that I could not go. So uh, I had to, you know, cancel my appointment. I did not know why. As a matter of fact, the voice was so loud. I was like, well, maybe the plane is going to go down. Like, I just don't know why I can't go to this thing. But I don't I don't even feel comfortable getting on the plane at this point, because at this point, it's scary. And um, the very next day, the very next day in New York City, Hurricane Sandy hit New York City and nobody, no, nobody knew a hurricane was coming. Nobody knew the hurricane was on the way. Nobody knew a thing. Hurricane Sandy hit New York City and nobody could fly out. The people were stuck at the airports for days. People could not leave their apartments. People couldn't leave out. And God protected me because I obeyed a voice that I did not technically know it was him. <laughs> um, I remember, y'all remember that time I was laying in the bed? I was laying in the bed and I heard, at this point I knew it was the Holy Ghost, okay? So at this point, I was laying in the bed and uh, the Holy Ghost said, wake up at, I don't, I don't remember the time exactly, but it was a time like 4.16 a.m., right? It was like a time like 4.16 a.m. And I heard the Holy Ghost said, wake up at 4.16 a.m. And I was like, why would I wake up at 4.16? Because now I still negotiate with this voice. I don't really do it in a whole lot today, but I negotiate with the voice a lot back then. And I was like, because I'm thinking I'm talking to myself also. And I'm like, why would I wake up at 4.16 a.m.? It doesn't make sense. I don't wake up that early. Why would I do it? And I kept hearing it. Wake up at 4.16 a.m. 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 Wake up, 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 wake I don't know why I'm waking up at 4.16 a.m. I don't even know who's talking to me right now. But I'm going to set my alarm for 4.16 a.m. I set my alarm for 4.16 a.m. I go to sleep. I wake up when my alarm wakes me up at 4.16 a.m. I wake because um, I don't even think my phone was near me. So I had to like, like, I had to get up and like. I had to lift my head up off the pillow to go get the phone, turn it off. And I'm like, I just kind of sit up in my bed like, why did I have to wake up at 4.16 a.m.? Baby, I went to put my head back down on that pillow and it was the biggest black spider 
I had ever seen since. And I have never seen a spider like that since I seen that spider that day. I saw the biggest black spider on my pillow and I have never seen a spider before and I have never seen a spider after. All because I woke up at 4.16 a.m. Did I kill it? Yeah, I killed that spider. Can't let it get away or I'm going to have to sell my bed. I can't sleep in my bed if I let the spider get away. Where, where am I going to sleep? I can't even sleep in the room no more. Sell the whole room. Give it away. Give the room away. I could go on and on and on and on and on and on of my stories and uh, and how God has protected me because I listen. But I think specifically God took me on a journey with him uh, after prayer today because God wanted to remind me, Tiffany, I have never steered you wrong. When nobody believed you, when everybody uh thought you were crazy when nobody believed that I have never steered you wrong. And not only has God never steered me wrong, he has always vindicated and proved that I was right. I know a lot of people get the difference between discernment and the gift of discerning of spirits like mixed up, but they are two different things. And let me tell you, your love for somebody will dim your spiritual discernment about that person. I'm going to say that one more time. Your love for somebody will dim your discernment about that person. When you love somebody so much that it clouds your discernment about that person, you're in trouble. When you love somebody so much that you can't hear what God is saying about the person or the situation or the scenario, you are in trouble. There's always a place that you have to leave for God, ideally the place that you leave for God, that he is always able to talk to you about the person that you you love. And so what God has afforded me the opportunity to have, uh, and this is a gift that it took time for me to like, right? Because the gift of discerning of spirits is the gift that uh, in the Bible put people in jail, got everybody mad at the person. Um, And I have many more stories outside of that, but it is the gift that allows you to see what other people refuse to see. And if people were wise, they would keep people like me and people like you, if you have this gift, around so that you could be the eyes in certain situations where they're blind in. The discernment is your ability to be able to tell the difference between right and wrong. This is just regular discernment. It's your ability to tell the difference between right and wrong. Right. And this is what most people, some people have and some people just don't have. Some people don't even have the ability to say this is right and this is wrong. Some people just don't have that ability. But it's your ability to tell the difference between right and wrong. This is different than the gift of discerning of spirits, which is now your ability to discern the spirit behind a decision that was made, a person you love, a person you hate, a person everybody's talking about, a person or a situation or a scenario, right? So let me try to give an example off the top of my head. I don't know. Um, I don't know. <clears throat> uh, Okay, let's let's say you watching two people going back and forth on social media, right? And if you're watching two people go back on social media, you probably have the, the you've been able to discern the difference between who is right and who is wrong on this, right? But if you have the gift of discerning of spirits, 
you're able to discern, oh, this person is actually operating in a spirit of Leviathan or a spirit of this is what's up under, even though the person's answers are accurate, even though the person's answers are correct, even though the person's answers are uh, from the outside in, oh, this person has a lot of scripture. This person seems very doctrinally accurate and things like that. You're able to discern the spirit behind uh, what's being said and what's being done. This is one of the revelation gifts that, that give you the ability to reveal what other people cannot see. And this is a gift in the body, I think, that we're losing um, day by day. The reason I believe and this is just my opinion on this, but the reason I believe that my gift of discerning of spirits is so strong is because I exercise that gift. I do not, uh, I have not allowed that gift to atrophy or, or another word for that is I don't ignore God. When God speaks to me, I listen. This is what affords me the opportunity as a prophet of God. When I'm in a shower in Ghana, okay, I mean, all the way in Ghana, and I hear God say, tell everybody to go get Listerine, right? You may say, Tiffany, how did you have the boldness to tell people to go get Listerine knowing that like people are going to be like, Listerine, what? It's because of all of these stories. It's because even though everything I said the person getting ready to kill themselves when they have been the happiest they'd ever been. This person being a witch when she, I've been friends with her for two years and she was one of the most beautiful people I've ever seen. Um, all of these stories I hear, God showed me how what I saw was crazy and nobody was going to believe me, but he was going to back me up after. This is why you see me say, August 2021, everybody go get Listerine. And I can say it with confidence, even with you calling me a false prophet, even with you saying... Um, I mean, y'all, they had called me every, every name under the book. I was like, I'm, I'm all that. Cause I told y'all to go buy some Listerine. Jesus. Like what? I wasn't all that before. I'm just that now. Cause of the Listerine only for now, your biggest hospitals all over the world, not in our country, not just in your, all over the world are treating the most severe cases with Listerine. Right. And so I want you all for the remainder of this year to build your confidence up by reminding yourself of certain experiences that you knew was wrong or right and nobody believed you and the Holy Ghost backed you up. The Holy Ghost backed you up. Why? Because it allows you to be bold in the prophetic uh, with wisdom, right? Because of past cases that you had that God closed for you. Uh, I am not somebody who came up in church I didn't get, um, I wasn't trained since childhood from a church, right? I didn't come up. I didn't go to Bible college. I didn't go to Bible school. I got saved in my shower. I have shower training from August, 2015. And um, I gave my life to Christ in 2015. I have been head over heels in love with God ever since. And uh, he's taken me through the school of the spirit to learn everything that I've learned. Of course, I've had amazing teachers along the way. God has, uh, there was a great man of God in Nigeria that told me you will never lack your teachers. And he said it over and over and over again at, at, after he, while he prayed for me, you will never lack your teachers. You will never lack your teachers. And God has gifted me with the most amazing teachers along my journey. Um, but I just wanted to encourage you all. Uh, there are some of you that just don't hear from God at all. So this is not for you. Uh, I don't want you to, there are just some people on here that just don't hear from God at all. I mean, and you taking this live and you're like, this is my confirmation, baby. It's not your confirmation. Okay. But for those of you that hear God and for those of you who everybody around you is on assignment to make you feel like you don't hear from God. I want this to encourage you today to let you know that not only do you hear God, you hear God clearly and what he put inside of you is a precious jewel, is a precious gift to the body of Christ. And if they were to recognize your gift, they now have an in-house detector system to let them know when something is off because you house the Holy Ghost. You are you belong to the Holy Ghost. And so 
yeah, I wish I had, I wish I wrote down some more story to tell you because I would remember. It's so many. I can't even like, <laughs> it's so many stories, but this is why if I'm ever around somebody or something's going on and I sense something's wrong or I sense this person is a witch or I sense this person is into some type of witchcraft, I'm going to say it. That's just how I am. Why? Because I have a strong track record with God of not being wrong. And I'd rather tell you than to not tell you. And then this person put something on you. And because you couldn't see it, it didn't work out that way. You know, so you don't not tell people just because they're not going to listen to you. You tell them and you allow God to reveal to them what you said was right. And again, you're not you're not doing this for the sake of being right. You're doing this for the sake of potentially saving somebody's life is the whole goal of it. So yeah, do not allow your gift of discerning of spirits to atrophy. Don't allow it to atrophy. Start exercising that gift by listening to the Holy Ghost and listening to what he said. That's it. That's it. You have any questions for me about that specific gift or anything I said or anything that I've done or have I lost friendships because of my gift of discerning of spirits? Absolutely. They drop like flies. But I find that anybody who doesn't want the truth drop like flies out of my life. That's just how that works. Um, I'm not a really great person to be around when you don't want the truth. But when you want to live in a certain level of deception... Uh, you often have to leave. Somebody says, do I also pray? You have two dreams and then other people have similar dreams too, but they don't know what it means or interpret it wrong. Yeah, I have, a, I have, I have what I like to consider a, a nice prayer life. Um, and so, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm pretty much always in prayer. How do I exercise the gift? I exercise the gift by doing what the Holy Ghost told me to do or not doing what the Holy Ghost told me not to do. I mean, there are certain times uh, the Holy Ghost has called me, and uh, not called me, the Holy Ghost has said, apologize to this person when I knew I wasn't wrong. I mean, I mean, I'm not wrong and not in a prideful way, but I'm not wrong. And the Holy Ghost says to me, pick up your phone and apologize to this person why? I know why now, because that person at the time did not have the, 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 the spiritual maturity to let it go. And they were going to allow bitterness and the Holy Ghost showed me sickness coming to them because of unforgiveness towards me. So in mercy, I humbled myself and baby, it took a lot of humbling. I mean, I wept. Woo I still remember. I just had a flashback. Well, that thing just ran up, ran me up. I just, I just felt it just now. I wept. I wept. I, that's how bad I did not want to apologize. But when the Holy Ghost showed me the sickness coming to that person because they were offended at me for something they had done wrong, I said, "Okay, well, it's not worth it. I don't want the person to get sick because of that." So, hey, um, I please forgive me. I am sorry. And you know what that person said? I forgive you. I'm like, okay, yeah, you, you ain't finna say sorry, bitch. Cause I didn't do nothing to you. But I ain't say all that. Oh boy, I just felt that just now. Boy, that was a, a, a good, hum, humbling one-on-one, okay? How important is it to ask God about your dreams? Uh, it's, it's He's the one that gave you the dream, hopefully. And if he didn't, you want to go to him to figure out how to stop the dream. So, so dream life. Let's, let's talk about this for a second. Your dreams are very important. And your dreams are... You ever hear that saying, on earth as it is in heaven? Let's start there. Whenever you hear dreams, or you, you hear that scripture, on earth, let your kingdom come on earth. As it already is in heaven. Okay. This means that. It's already up there brewing. 
And depending on what we loose or bind, it's going to come to earth as it already is in heaven. So for those of you, let me see, because just because I wasn't ready for this training, but you know, give me one second, y'all. Sorry, we got to get so close to my face, but I just want to get my notebook out for you. I want to take you on a little journey with me uh, just through scripture, because I want to show you how important dreams are. One moment, please. Okay, go with me to Job 33, 14, 17. I wish y'all could see how many notebooks I got around me right now. I mean, baby, you be like, Tiffany, do a training on something. I'm like, on what? I be going through, 50, God got me on 15 trainings right now. Go with me to Job 33, verse 14 through 17. He said, for God speaketh once, yea, twice, yet man perceiveth it not. God speaketh once, yea, twice. But man did not perceive it in a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon a man and slumberings upon the bed, then he opens up the ears of men and sealeth their instruction that he may withdraw man from his purpose and hide pride from the man. Go with me to Matthew thirteen twenty five. Go with me to Matthew 13, 25. He said, but while men slept, the enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and then went his way. While you are asleep, that's why I don't be sleeping at night. Tiffany, what you be doing at night? Maybe I don't play. I don't play. Matthew 13, 25. Because while men slept, the enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat. Go with me to 1 Kings 3. One through three. Is it one through three? Well, 1 Kings 3 verse 5. And the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night. And God asked, ask what I should give you. Ask what I should give you. We all know how Solomon ended up being the richest and wisest man that ever lived. Do you all know that all came from a dream he had? That was, a, that was from a dream. That was literally from a dream that he had. Ephesians 1 3 says, blessed be God and father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Up there. Let me see where I wrote down Genesis 15 verse 1 through 2. Let me see. Genesis 15 verse 1 through 2. Oh, this is good. Okay. It's a little lengthy, but you you can read it on your own. But this is when Abraham could not conceive. And he said, and God came to Abraham in a vision saying, fear not, Abram. I am your shield. I am your exceeding great reward. In verse two, Abram said, Lord God, what wilt thou give me seeing I go childless and the steward of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. Verse 17, verse seven through 17. He says, uh... Gosh, because he put him in a dream, y'all. Y'all got to read this on your own time because this one is a little lengthy. But he put him in a dream too. What I'm trying to say is dreams are important, right? Joseph was a dreamer. Daniel was a dreamer. Like dreams are important. So if any of you dream, there is no reason why you should not have studied Daniel by now. You have not studied Joseph by now. You haven't studied these scriptures I just gave you. There is no reason you should have a dream life and you are not well versed in the lives of these people. You have to know this. Why? Let's say you have a dream and in the dream you're having sex with somebody, right? Let's say you live a pretty chaste life. You, you live a pretty holy life um, outside of when you're awake, you're, you live a holy life. Well, let's say when you go to sleep, you have a dream and it's a familiar face that you're having a dream with. It's not a stranger. It's not somebody you don't know. 
but this person is having sex with you. Well, what you don't know is it's not that person. It's a familiar spirit that is now making a covenant with you in the realm of the spirit. You don't have to be awake to make a covenant. You don't have to be coherent to make a covenant. This is why so many children, when they're born into ritualistic practices, have covenants over them because a covenant does not have to be formed with your knowledge. So here this person is, this familiar spirit, this masquerading spirit, this monitoring spirit is making a covenant with you in your dream. The first thing you should do when you wake up is to renounce that covenant, to break that agreement, to divorce it in the name of Jesus Christ. You don't let that rock. Let's say you go to sleep and you have a dream of a car crash. You don't. You wake up and you start binding that car crash. Why? Because God is now giving you intel. He is giving you secret information that natural minds can't conceive of what the enemy has planned against you or your loved ones. Against you or your loved ones. And so because God is giving you private information to a secret council that's trying to kill you, You want to wake up and you want to start binding that car accident. Come against it in the name of Jesus Christ. Go into tongues. Go into war about that. Break that assignment off of you and your children's life. All of that. If you see something good happen in your dreams, um, I don't know. You want to loose it. Thank you, Father, for what you promised me. I loose that into my life. I loose the blessings of the Lord in my life. Things of that nature. But these are things you don't want to ignore and you want to always go to God about your dreams because he's who gave it to you. And I think it's very dangerous to Google your dreams because 99% of the things that's coming up on Google is new age, is the occult, and it's not none of it's God. And so you don't want to go to Google. You want to go to God. You want to ask God, you gave me this dream. I don't understand what it means. Holy Spirit, can you interpret this for me? Can you walk me through and teach me how to interpret these dreams? Because you don't you don't think for one second God doesn't want you to know what you dreamed. I believe that he wants us to seek it out with him is because we spend more time with him when we do that, right? You have to go through scripture. You have to go through the Bible. You have to, like people often ask me, Tiffany, what's a snake mean in a dream? And I'm like, that's just, that's just common sense at this point, y'all. What do a snake mean in the Bible? You know, like, I don't care what nobody say. You're not never going to make a snake mean something good to me in a dream because of what it means in the Bible. Everything should line up with scripture. You know? Uh, Homes that you've lived in before, definitely uh, from what I've gotten from Holy Spirit, it's a sign of delay. So anytime I've ever had a dream about me in a past house, I come out of agreement with that house. I renounce any covenants that were made in that house, any altars that were erected in that house against my life. Um, I come against it because I don't I don't I shouldn't have no dreams about my past. No dream about no childhood home should come up. No dream about anything like that should come up. So I'm breaking every covenant. I'm breaking every evil altar that was in that house. I'm I'm coming out of agreement with whatever that house represented. Um, And don't you better not never show up in my dream again. How about that? And I find that that works, you know, I find that that works. Anything, anything from your past is not never a good thing in your dreams, like childhood schools, or, uh, it means you're late in something. It means you're late. So you want to go ahead and speed that on up. You want to break covenants. You want to break any evil altar where the covenant is speaking and uh, Father, make me an arrow and shoot me back into divine timing, you know? So, shoot me into divine timing where I'm supposed to be. Don't let me be late, you know? What if you don't dream? Everybody is not dreamers. So if, you, if you're somebody on here today and you don't have dreams often, everybody does not dream. So I don't want you to feel like you're behind or you're not, 
You know, everybody doesn't dream. God talks to everybody in different ways and in different seasons. So for instance, me, um, I started having dreams regularly in 2015. Before then, I used to go into trances and I used to have open visions. What that means is you would be sitting with me out. We could be in full public. We could be at a picnic, at a barbecue. Okay, they playing. Hey. Okay, we dancing. And baby, I go into a full trance like. I stop everything I'm doing and I like I'm in a zone and you would stop and be like, Tiffany, hey, Tiff, where you at? Tiffany, that's how that's how people had to get me to come back to out of the vision. And God would show me something like a movie. I mean, just while I was wide awake and it was it, it, it stopped my whole body from moving like I couldn't I was I wasn't even there anymore. So I would have visions, I would go into trances, and then uh, uh, somebody said, like, that's so Raven. Absolutely not, because she works in uh, the occult and the new age. No, like Apostle Paul, like the Holy Ghost. So please don't never compare me to nobody that works in psychic work in life. Anyway, um, so anyway, I, um, so I used to have trances and visions, and then... In 2015, God took me into dreaming. And I've been a very heavy dreamer since 2015. But then there are times where my dream life slows up some. And uh, what I have learned from God in my very short time of walking with him is that anytime he slows up a way of communication for me, That's not time for me to start whining and complaining of why I'm not having dreams anymore. I immediately say, because I'm not one of those people that think God is always silent. And I don't I don't ever feel like I'm in a silent season with God. Right. Why? Because I know that God is always talking in the word, in his word, always. And so there also comes a time where God wants you to stop relying on dreams, stop relying on visions, stop relying on trances, stop relying on what you're used to and get back in the word of God and you know, follow the word if you're not hearing anything. And so if you're not having dreams, you're not unusual, right? Like everybody doesn't have dreams. There are some people that have open visions, like so some people God talks to face to face. Um, but you're not weird if you don't have dreams. Now, if you had dreams before and they've kind of slowed down and stopped, you may want to ask God why a lot of people have like dream catchers in their homes as decorations, but dream catchers do exactly what they say they do. They catch your dreams and it comes from a very spiritualistic witchcraft practice from, um, a whole nother religion. And y'all got it in your house and tattooed it on your body. Like it's decoration. It's not decoration guys. A dream catcher does exactly what it says it does which is catches your dreams. Let's get rid of them. And uh, so, yes, you should always go to God about your dreams. And there's obviously a whole lot to share about dreaming, but who feels like going there? Yes, Prophetess Harriet Tubman had trances as well. And baby, I love me some Harriet Tubman, okay? Love. Let's see. What if you dream but vaguely remember in the morning? So I don't know if you see that book that I always advise everybody to read. It's called... um, Oh, shoot. What is it called? Demonic breaking demonic covenants and curses or something like that. Uh, go and get that book that has I've seen in my book club. People that have been reading that book said that their dreams came back after they prayed certain prayers. Yes. Harriet Tubman was a prophetess. Yeah, Brittany says, do do I have any moments of discerning spirits as a young child? I do. My earliest memory of it is when I was five years old. 
My earliest memory when I was five years old, I was sitting on, I was five years old. I was sitting on the front front stoop of my neighborhood eating ice cream. It was a very hot day and I was just eating an ice cream cone. I lived in a very safe neighborhood. Uh, it was like the Cosby show. Like all of my neighbors were like Bill Cosby, the, Hus- the Huxtables, right? So uh, it was a, like all of the kids were able to play outside. Like we lived in a very safe neighborhood. And I remember at five years old, I was eating a popsicle, um, uh, ice cream cone. It was vanilla ice cream cone. And uh, there was this white man that was walking down the sidewalk. And white people in our neighborhood was not a normal thing. Okay, it was not normal. So he already stood out like a sore thumb. But I remember that he had on a long trench coat. I remember that he had a very long trench coat on. And uh, at five years old, I didn't think anything was weird about it. I mean, obviously today I do because it was so hot outside and he was white and he just shouldn't have been in our neighborhood because that was weird. And uh, I remember him. Now, this is before anybody had the conversation about not helping people find their dogs. But nobody had had that conversation with me yet. And so I... uh, he came up to me and he said, I lost my dog. Can you help me find my dog? And because I had always wanted a dog, I was like, absolutely. I will help you find your dog because I want to pet the dog. So I get up. When I get up, I go into a vision. And this man in this vision, I I see him. I see, I, I see that his plan is to kill me and to dump me into the woods. I, I see it. And I still go to help him find his dog. But thankfully, because apparently God has been watching over me. Angels watching over me. And, I mean, my life is a movie. I promise y'all. I take one step to go find this man. I was five years old. I take one step to go find this man, help this man find his dog, because clearly the vision wasn't enough for me. And my mom came out the front door and said, hey, and he ran away. That is the first memory I have of having visions. Mercy is right, okay? Because I was like... Why did anybody tell me not to help nobody find a dog, first of all? And second of all, like. So I was five years old when I can remember my very first vision. And uh, yeah. So. But hey, guys, if you don't know who I am, my name is Tiffany and Uh, God has gifted me with a ministry called Covered by God. I would love for you all to join me um, next week, next Thursday, 2-24-22. We are joining for our next Covered by God meeting. It's already sold out, even though the tickets are free, but it is a ticketed event because so many people come from out of town. Subscribe to my YouTube channel right now, Tiffany. It's, uh, what is my YouTube channel? I don't know, youtube.com forward slash Tiffany Montgomery. Or you can just click the link in my bio and it'll take you right there and subscribe so that you can get a notification when we go live on Thursday. It's gonna be lit. And then we also fast for the first three days of every single month, always. So our next fast is coming up on the first through the third. Go to coveredbygod.co or again, just click the link in my bio, sign up and check your spam folder or your promotional folder for your email because sometimes they land over there. Listen, I don't know why God has gifted me with the ability to open up wombs by fire, but baby, I'm telling you, God has put something in these little hands of mine that the barren give birth. Okay, I have had testimonies for a very long time. Those that have followed me for quite some time can attest to this. God has given me uh, just the grace to open up wombs and uh, wombs have been opening up like crazy during our fast. So listen, this is not a fast to play with. God is a miracle worker and uh, and I'm so excited about what God is doing And I'm going to tell you like God reminded me this morning, you are scheduled for a new season. You are scheduled for a new season. That means that in God's time, he already has a timetable up. It's not on your time. You are scheduled 
for a new season. And one thing I love about God is that God is the author and he's the finisher of your faith. He's the author and the finisher, which means that if God started something in you, it's impossible for him not to finish it because he's a finisher. That's why he's the author and the finisher. God doesn't start things without finishing things. He's the author and he's the finisher. So just understand that God has never started something in you that he's not going to finish. I heard the I am that I am say you're scheduled for a new season. I heard the ancient of days say that you are scheduled for a new season. I heard the king of glory say that you are scheduled for a new season. I heard Jehovah Rapha, God who heals. I heard him say, you're scheduled for a new season. I heard Jehovah Shalom say, God, our peace, that you are scheduled for a new season. I heard Jehovah Nissi say, the one that's your banner. That You know what a banner is? It's like when you go out on a parade and the banner announces you before the parade comes. That's what, that's what the banner is. So Jehovah Nissi is that banner. And the banner that goes before us is victory. So I heard Jehovah Nissi say, the one that announces that the victory has come before you get there. I heard him say that you are scheduled for a new season. I heard El Roy say, God who sees you. I heard him say that you are scheduled for a new season. It's, it's here. I'm excited. I love you all to life. Everybody go to my, the link in my bio and uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel and go sign up for the next fast because it's going to be lit. I heard alpha and omega. Okay. The beginning and the end. One thing I love, I'm, I'm telling you that author and finisher and beginning and end has really laid me out these days because I'm like, first of all, God doesn't start something he doesn't finish. Like he's not, he didn't leave you hanging. God did not leave you hanging. So we don't call him alpha and omega for nothing. We don't call him beginning and end for nothing. We don't call him the first and the last for nothing. We don't call him the God who never changes for nothing. We don't call him, we don't call him these things forever, like for nothing. He is the I am that I am. He is the bread of life. He is Jehovah Gabor. He is the man of war. I heard the man of war say, you are scheduled for a new season. I heard Jehovah Saboeth say, God of the angel armies. I heard him say, you're scheduled for a new season. I heard the covenant keeper say, you are scheduled for a new season. I heard the promise keeper say that you, baby, are scheduled for a new season. I heard the covenant keeper say you're scheduled for a new season. The covenant keeper. Oof. Baby, that thing will preach over and over and over and over. Y'all should go listen to the last cover by God because, baby, that's what I started with. Okay, that thing is good to me. Do you understand me? We are scheduled for a new season. The next cover by God is going to be fire. By the grace of God, it's going to be fire. He's going to meet everybody at our point of need. And I am so excited. Come with a high level of expectation. Come with a high level of expectation. I want you to expect God to meet your needs. I want you to expect the covenant keeping God to meet your needs. I want you to expect the promise keeping God to meet your needs. I want you to expect uh, that I'm going to contend with those that contend with you and fight against those that fight against you, God, to meet your needs. I want you to expect the God that heals to meet your needs. I want you to expect God who prevents. You know, we often we often give thanks to God who heals, but we don't often take into account God who prevents. So we are going to come in high expectation that God who prevents is also still going to meet our needs. Yes, Covered by God, it streams live online on YouTube. So that's why I want you to click the link in my bio. 
subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you can get the notification when we go live. Get the notification when we go live. And go and watch the, the last cover by God called You Are Scheduled for a New Season. You are scheduled for a new season. It's good. God is good. I would stay on here longer, but uh, I wanted to study a few things before I went to sleep tonight. Uh, but I do really want to stay on here tonight, but I'm trying not to procrastinate because, you know, I've been doing good for the last few weeks of doing what I was supposed to be doing. God who delivers. Come on, deliverer. I heard the deliverer say you were scheduled for a new season. I heard the deliverer say that you are scheduled for a new season. I heard the deliverer say God who delivers, God who rescues. I heard him say you are scheduled for a new season. Somebody said, do you think that you can miss your destiny? Uh, let me say yes and no. I will say, I will say uh, yes. Uh, in that, let's look at Moses. He never made it to the promised land. We can argue that that wasn't his destiny, but I think it was. I don't think God wanted him to fight and not make it there. Um, so I think, uh, I think, yes, you can miss your destiny. I think you can miss your destiny because of disobedience. I think you can miss your destiny because of fear. I think you can miss your destiny because of rebellion or stubbornness or you know, I think there's so many different reasons you can miss destiny, but absolutely, uh, I think you can miss destiny. Uh, and then I also, God is God. He's sovereign. So even in all of his grace and mercy, you know, uh, I don't know what God chooses do, to do in the life of somebody who is doing those things. So the answer is uh, up in the air. But yes, I do. I, we see many people die before they've reached destiny. So yes, I do believe that. One can miss destiny for sure. Somebody's asked me, what do I think about people getting fillers who are Christians, uh, face fillers? I don't even know. I don't even know what that is probably. So I can't help. If you, if you're already signed up for the fast, you don't have to sign up again. So... So good. How do I study, girl? It's just a big mess how I study. I can't even, I, I can't even. First of all, I want y'all to know that I get up. When I preach, I preach from a notebook. I, it's just so much here. I can't even. I was going to try to show y'all something, but I'll be writing notes. And then when I'm done, I'm like, I don't even know what I just wrote. I can't even. What the heck did I write? Like I was doing some studying on um, the covenant of peace. I don't even know what I wrote no more. I don't even know how to read my, I don't even know what I wrote and why I wrote it. Like, cause normally I color code everything. So like, this is an example. Like I did a study like on covenant of peace. It was just my own personal wanting to know what this covenant was. But I normally color code my stuff. Cause that's how I am able to concentrate a lot better on stuff, but I didn't color code it. Chrissy says, how do I manage the entire training Holy Spirit does with me? Uh, honey, barely. Okay. I mean, barely. Because you got to understand with the Holy Ghost training comes the Holy Ghost refining. Right? With the Holy Ghost training comes the Holy Ghost fire of refining. And that hurts. That doesn't feel good. Okay. Can you imagine, you know, a lot of people go into a time of fasting. I don't know why many people fast. I'm not even going to assume. Uh, but I do know that fasting and prayer together gets prayers answered very, very, very quickly. But the real reason we're to go into a time of fasting is to humble yourself. And the only way 
because flesh can't be cast out. That's not a demon that can be cast out. Flesh is your personality. And really the only thing that can rip that out is fasting in the word of God, right? But imagine going on a real fast, which is what we do at Covered by God. And with this real fast, you allow the Holy Ghost to hold a mirror up to your face. Because you wouldn't believe how many people I know go into a time of fasting, come out, don't hear God, come out and can point out what's wrong with everybody else. But the Holy Ghost ain't told you what was wrong with you. You in the wrong fast anyway. That's not that wasn't the right fast. If you came out of this fast and you didn't see nothing about your lying, deceiving, manipulative self, you was in the wrong fast. But anytime you go into a real fast, the fast that humbles you, because that's what fasting is all about. The Holy Ghost holds up a mirror to this nasty face of yours. I don't care how cute you think you are with your red lipstick on and your pink glasses and your little cute French braid pigtails. I don't care how cute you think you are. The Holy Ghost holds up this Holy Ghost mirror to your little cute self, okay? And you just smiling at the Holy Ghost. You think y'all in love because you, you know, you think you're doing something a little cute because you taking a little time out. You turn down your plates, just you and God. And you just really, you know, Hosanna forever. I love you. Hosanna. He's like, okay. Hey, Tiff. And you're like, yes, yes, God. Yes. I just, I'm just trying to sing my lullabies to you, Father, because I love you so much. He's like, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Settle down. Uh, pick up the mirror for me. And you're like, okay, I am pretty cute today. Let me pick up the mirror. Hosanna. Ah! Who is that? He's like, that's you. And you're like, ah! it can't be me. It was like a monster. He's like, yeah, that's you. With your cute, you with your cute self. So cute, it's you. And I'm like, I'm that ugly? And he's like, yeah. That's you. That's, that's how ugly you are. And I'm like, uh, uh, I don't even know how to fix it then. I didn't know I was this ugly because I thought I was cute. <laughs> and he's like, no, 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 no. I got it. Don't worry. I just wanted you to see it in the mirror. I'm going to just go ahead and light this match though. And I'm going to set you on fire. And this refiner's fire. I know you, you know, I know you like to pray about fire. You know, I'm a good, like, you know, I'm by, by, by fire. I'm good for calling down that fire, okay? And I be meaning it when I do. But he's like, no, 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 no I got a different fire for you. It's called the refiner's fire. And I'm going to just light you up. And baby, I be in my room tossing and turning. I me hyperventilating, crying. <laughs> <laughs> and then don't forget i got kids i got to feed so then i got to get i got to i'm set on fire and i got to come downstairs and feed the kids and then that that causes me to go out in public and i'm in the refiner's fire in public don't let somebody look at me wrong and i'm like oh, i want to kill everybody and he's like yep yeah. turn the heat up on you a little bit and you're like ah! He's like, yeah, I just need to, I need to burn this off of you. I need to, cause you're scheduled for a new season. I need you to come up a little higher. You know what I'm saying? That season is coming up. So I, the refiner's fire has got, but don't worry, Tiff. You're going to come out as pure gold. Like, trust me. Oh, this heat is going to make you, a, the, the, the brilliance of the light that's going to come out of the jewel that you are, the brilliance of this new diamond that I'm making you that could only get this way through this fire I'm putting you through. It couldn't get there no other way. I know it hurts now. I know you thought you were going to sing these beautiful lullaby songs to me, but real worship, real worship. is when you worship me in spirit and in truth. And you can't worship me in spirit and in truth when you don't hold this mirror up to your face. You can't worship me in spirit and truth when you don't allow me to show you what you look like and then you don't allow me to take you through the process. Because anytime you can come from looking at this and you can still be a liar and you can still be manipulative and you can still be deceitful, and you, and you feel you're not grieved about it. You're not convicted about it. You feel no way about it. 
is the second you're in trouble as a believer and you now belong to the devil. So I just want to get it out of you. So I hope that I hope that makes sense about how my process goes because baby, it's not it's not fun over here. Okay, I know y'all like y'all see me on Instagram sometimes. I'll be posting stuff. It be you know rocking sometimes, but baby, I'll be over here. <laughs> then when you see me on stage, baby, that refiner's fire that done kicked in. Okay, and I'm back being saved again. So, woo, honey, my training is nothing nice. Do you understand me? I mean, I don't wish it on nobody. To be very honest with you. Well, God be put now. I don't know nothing about the launderer's soap because you know you talk about the refiner's fire and the launderer's soap. I don't know. Maybe he washed me up. I'm I'm washed up by the launderer's soap, but that refiner's fire right there. Baby. I know. I know. I was that ugly with my cute self. But yeah, that's all. So everybody, next time you fast with me, make sure you hold up the mirror so that you don't see everything wrong in everybody else, but you you fix what is it, the enemies of your soul, right? The things that don't glorify God so that when this new season comes for you, uh, you are able to walk in it boldly and things of that nature. Um, but it will require, excuse me, it will require you to be honest with yourself and to be humble enough to tell yourself the truth about you, uh, especially when you think you're all that in a bag of chips, because none of us are, uh, according to God. So, yeah, that's my that's my process. It's so bad. But, yeah, if you're fasting and you're working from home, yes, you should try to take those days off. Like, just try if you can. You really want to give that time to God. If possible, I mean, you will see a world of difference in your time of fasting if you can give that time to God. It is wild how, how, um, it's just wild what happens when you put stuff down. And here's the thing, you're never going to be like at a loss for something. Like you can never lose time at work spending the time with God. Because God will give you a strategy to make up that time that you took off to focus only on him. That's what I find. I do. I've worked very little and uh, I'm I'm pretty successful, if you will, uh, by the world standard of success. Right. But uh, I don't I don't work a whole lot. And that's because I asked God uh <clears throat> If he if he could allow me not to work a lot and still make a lot of money, I wanted to spend the majority of my time with him. And he has honored my request. And uh, I make sure that I stick to the vow I made to God. So I spend a lot of my day in prayer and just enjoying God. And I spend very little time working and I make a lot of a lot of money by the grace of God. So that's just how it works for me. Somebody said, you work smart. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. So, yeah. Love you all. Go to my, click the link in my bio, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and sign up for the next fast. Cover by God next Thursday is going to be lit. I love you to life and see you later.